الله أكبر الله أكبر The Quran is the kalam of Allah The Quran is the kalam of Allah You know what that means? It's the original speech of Allah When I'm reciting right now وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ The words came out of whose mouth? My mouth That means they are my qawl But definitely they are not my kalam They are my qawl but they're not my kalam The Quran will describe Quran as kalamullah Hatta yasma'a kalam Allah But now when it comes to qawl When Allah speaks it's his qawl When Jibreel speaks it's his qawl When Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi speaks it's his qawl But whatever their qawl is the kalam still belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal Now, in the study of hadith, you probably know, in the study of hadith, one of the most important things is a chain of narration. Which companion heard from which companion, heard from who, and who heard it from the Prophet ﷺ, and how many people heard it from him, and are these people reliable? There's a chain of narration. As a matter of fact, the entire Qur'an reaches us through a chain of narration. The Prophet recited this Qur'an to his followers, who recited it to theirs, and that's how it came to us. The Qur'an starts with that chain. But the first link of that chain is actually not the Prophet. The Prophet has to get that Qur'an from the angel. And the angel has to get that Qur'an from the seventh heaven, from the company of Allah. So if we're going to have an authentic chain, we have to go all the way to the top. And so what these ayah do, is described that this is not the word of, this, this words that your Prophet is reciting, is actually being recited to him, the qawl is coming to him, from a noble messenger, Rasul in Kareem, a noble messenger. The previous surah already described that the revelation was being written down. Now we're learning, once it's written down, it comes and is delivered in the form of qawl by a noble messenger, meaning Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam. What is the description of Jibreel? The quwwatin. Before I translate that, I want to share with you that, you know, the Bible calls him Gabriel. We call him Jibreel or Jibrail, right? And these names, they're originally from the Hebrew Bible, uh, Gibreel or Gabriel. That's the Hebrew version of the name Jibreel. And Gabr in, Arab, in Hebrew actually means power. And Il means God, meaning the powerful creature of God. So the word Jibreel in Hebrew means the powerful creature of God. And what does the Qur'an do? Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ ذِي قُوَّةٍ Possessor of power, possessor of might. And this is really interesting. Because Jibreel alayhi salam, his name originally is not Arabic. If you try to find his name in Arabic, it doesn't exist. Because the word Jibreel is not an Arabic word. It actually is borrowed from the Hebrew language into the Arabic language. And the Prophet ﷺ did not speak Hebrew. He didn't speak Hebrew. This word is translated by Allah from Hebrew into the Arabic Qur'an by the words what? The quwwatin. How does the Qur'an know that the meaning of Jibreel's name is the quwa? It's because it's the same source. The revelation of that scripture is the same. That's those stars, what's left of them, were also sent by Allah. And this revelation is also sent by Allah. So it's actually even in the way that Allah says the quwatin is already proof that this is not the word of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's already, for, especially for the Jewish audience that heard this, like, how do you know that? You know, Gabar ilan, actually from it, the Arabic meaning, this close Arabic root is Jabr, which also means power. Right? And from it you get Jabbar. Right? So now, the quwwatin عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ makin. He's mighty, he possesses great might, he is in the company of the one that owns the throne. ذِي arsh, the mighty throne of Allah, he's right in his company. This is a description of Jibreel alayhi salam's residence. He is in the Sidratil Muntaha in Surah Al Najm. Here he describes Jibreel, there he described Jibreel. Here he said he's right by the Arsh, there he said in the Sidratil Muntaha. He got closer to the address. And he said he's right by the low tree. You know, there's a special kind of low tree up there by which Jibreel, Jibreel has his residence. But then he says, Makin, stationed. 
And I want to actually give you a few things. Makin sifatul mushabbaha min mukun aw aw makuna bi dhamm al kaf makanatan idha alat rutbatuhu 'inda ghayrihi. Makin means someone of a very high status and someone who has a stable position. Someone tenured, you can also call makin. Like a professor who's got tenure can also be a makin, okay? Up to bagate bagay bas. Like now you're settled, right? Now listen. Go back a little bit. What bring what does what does Jibreel alayhi salam bring? He brings Quran. The story of the coming of the Quran from the skies needs to be understood. It is a high profile document, is it not? There is no higher profile message that's ever been sent. And when a king or nowadays a president or a prime minister sends a high profile message to somebody through an ambassador, through an embassy, what do they have to do? Do they just send an email? Do they just put it in the regular mail, make an envelope and put it in the mailbox? No. Those kind of messages need an enormous amount of security. Don't they? First of all, you have to have someone. You can't just have anybody deliver that message. It has to be a dignitary. Someone that has karama has to deliver it. If it's going from one to the other and it's coming from a king, someone dignified by the king has to be sent. So a messenger has to be noble in order to deliver the message on behalf of a king. What's the first description of Jibreel alayhi salam? Innahu laqawlu rasulin kareem. He's the word delivered by a noble messenger, a noble ambassador from Allah. Nobility is a requirement of a high profile delivery message. The second thing he says is he's mighty. The quwwatin. Why is his might and power important? Because this is a classified important message, there may be somebody that tries to steal this document. There may be somebody that tries to gain access to this document. There may be somebody that tries to overpower him and take the message from him. You ever seen movies when somebody's traveling with high profile classified information and they've got like a chain in the briefcase? Right? And then they've got security guards around. But you know what Allah says? He doesn't need no chain, no briefcase, nor security guards because he possesses great might. Himself, nobody's going to mess with Jibreel alayhi salam. And then you need someone who's very close to the administration, who the administration can entrust, not only someone noble, but somebody very close to the position of power, so that there is no chain. Like you don't say, for example, it's a classified message, and I, I imagine I'm the president, I'm not, but I, you know, I'm the president, and I want to give this to my ambassador, I'm not going to give it to some intern at the White House to hand it to the ambassador. I need to have direct access to who? The ambassador, There's, there can be no one low profile in between because it's highly sensitive information. Which means that ambassador, whoever that is, that vice president, whoever that is, has to be very close to me. What does Allah do? Not only is He powerful, عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ He's right by the, by the arsh itself, the throne itself. In other words, there's no one between Allah and Jibreel alayhi salam, that proximity. Right? And that's how it's delivered. And then, this has to be someone who has been around for a while, and whose rank is respected across the board. His experience, his tenure is important because he'll know what to do. And also others need to respect that that's his majal, that's his space, nobody can touch that space. He's qualified and that's above everybody else's pay grade. What is captured, what one word captures that status of Jibreel alayhi salam? Makin. The quwwat, rasulin, kareemin, the quwwatin, inda dhil arshi, makin. And then that's not enough. When he decides to deliver the message, when Allah sends him down to deliver even one ayah of the Qur'an, when he comes down with one surah of the Qur'an, Allah says, that's not enough, you can't just go alone. Muta'in. He comes with a legion of angels. Muta'in means followed. Previous surahs we learned, the scribes of the revelation are multiple in number, and righteous in number. Other place in Qur'an, in Surah Al-Jinn, you're going to learn, when the Qur'an started coming down, the entire sky was covered with angels, and the jinn that used to go hang out, they had different parking lots around different planets, where they used to go hang out, they can't hang out there anymore. They can't go up there anymore. And they're like, what's going on? Why is the sky on lockdown? We don't get it. That's in Surah Al-Jinn. And when they finally find out the Qur'an is coming, they're like, oh, that's why. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayyana is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the Deeper Look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayyanaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.